Good morning. So yesterday we had a wonderful prayer breakfast and uh, inquire her. So the song came up, somebody pray for me. So I think that'd be very appropriate for today. So join in if you want to, okay?
Amen, amen. Somebody prayed for me, had me on their mind, took the time to pray for me. And there's something about prayer that makes it better. Uh, even before it gets better, it makes it better. And I thank God for that. Uh, uh, we had a, a wonderful prayer meeting yesterday. Uh, well, it's it a uh, breakfast prayer meeting. They had, they had some good vittles also uh, to go along with the prayer and uh, God blessed us. Uh, you know, the measure is whether you come out better than you went in. And, and we went in and, and came out better because uh, we had a chance to pray for each other. Amen. And we ought to take that opportunity to pray more often. Uh, prayer moves God. Amen. The other stuff may not change, but prayer moves God, and prayer can encourage us even when we just tell God about it. Uh, a lot of things come in. This is Palm Sunday. This is the Sunday when Jesus uh, rode into Jerusalem, and the people took their coats off and jackets off and shawls off and palm leaves and laid them down for him to celebrate his coming. They changed after a couple of days, but they celebrated his coming. Amen. A couple of, uh, we have a Bible study every Wednesday noon. There's a Zoom Bible study. Uh, we come to prayer meeting at 6 after that. Uh, we got a lot of lost and found down there. I see some of it left last week. So uh, if you need something, go, go check it out. You may find what you need. Uh, long life birthday April uh, will be Sister Lois Ramsey amen so uh, uh, get a card and some kind of uh, encouragement for her uh, there's an Easter egg hunt and play practice this coming Saturday at 8 o'clock no, I'm sorry that's April the 8th it's at 9 o'clock I'm sorry uh, next Sunday morning instead of Sunday school in the place of Sunday school we have our Easter uh, play our speeches our <coughs> celebrations so we're gonna start off early now no, normally Sunday school is at 930 but we're gonna start at 9 o'clock amen. amen so they have plenty of time to do the worship service um, pastor's anniversary on April 23rd uh, wheel and walk festival April 15th uh, there's a post in the vestibule on that. Uh, you, we were invited to Shining Light Missionary Baptist Church on Friday for a concert. Now, uh, we have those on our special prayer list. We, we're praying for Sister Shirley Laurie. We're praying for Sister Ernestine Gilbert, for Rose Thompson. We're praying for Brother Glenn Wilson. We're praying for Brother Keith Williams. And one thing I said the other day, and they just sung of our prayer, but uh, we have to make some adjustments. Sometimes we don't pray because we don't know if it's God's will or not. But God knows his will. So if you got a will, you can tell God what you want. And if it's not fitting in his will, then he'll let you know. But don't hold back on praying for what you need and what you want. Ask God. He can always say wait. He can always say no. And he can 
can always do it. But don't not ask. I, I tell people, I, I, I used to talk to the salesman at the bank, and I said, well, don't forget to ask for the trade. Don't, don't talk and, 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 and not say, will you do what I'm offering you to do? And don't forget to pray and ask God. I don't care how big it is. I don't care how little it is. Don't forget to pray and ask God for what you want. Jesus, you know, and Jesus, was per he told God that he didn't want to do it. Then he said, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. So it's, it's okay to ask God for things that, you know, you don't think is in his will. And if you keep on asking, uh, God is able to do it. Sometimes, you know, he, 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 he'll get us through if he can't get it, get it out of the way. This is our hour. This is our time to pray. I don't know what is on your heart, on your mind. I don't know what you're going through. But the people of God also go through. The key is not to stop in the middle. I made a point about uh, sometimes it's raining real hard and, and you're tempted to pull over. What I try to do is keep on driving through. Because I might get to a spot where it's not raining anymore. If I pull over, it may keep raining. But Whatever you have going on in your life, number one, God cares. And, and, and sometimes, you know, even if people are not going to do anything, it's good to know they care. God cares. And God is able. Some people don't care. And some people who do care are not able. But God cares and God is able. And if you ask him, he will answer. So clear your heart of whatever else is going on. And let's give these next few minutes to God. Think about him. I invite you to stand where you are, if you will, or you can sit and bow your head. But however you pray, I invite you to pray with me. You know, I know that when I talk to God, it's not in vain. I know he hears me when I call. Somebody said I get great consolation when I pray. Father God, we come this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. We come, Lord, as humble to know how to come. We realize that you are God, and that you're God alone. We give you praise and honor and glory right now. We bless you, Father, the best that we know how to bless you. We thank you, Lord, for what you've already done. Some of us have been sick, but we're healed now. Some of us have been in trouble, dear Lord, but you bailed us out. Some of us, Lord, have had, had, had worries and problems that we didn't know what to do with, Lord, but you gave us relief. And some, Father, are going through right now. I pray that you would see our need and have mercy. I pray, Lord, that you would raise up heads that are bowed down with uh, the weight of their lives and the weight of this world. I pray, Lord, that you would manifest yourself right here, right now, in our hearts and in our minds and our souls. That you bless our coming, dear Lord, that you would bless those who come in, in need that you provide for the needs. That you would heal the sick, Lord, and 
give peace to those who are troubled right now. That you bless our singing and our praising, Lord, that your name might be lifted up, Father, that you would inhabit that praise. I pray for those in hospital rooms and nursing homes. I pray for those who are by themselves right now, Lord, and it seems like nobody cares, that you would bless. I, I pray for that troubled mind, that troubled spirit, Lord, that uh, I speak peace right now to them. Bless your word, that your word might bless your people. Bless your praise, that your praise might lift the burden. Show us how to be a church. Teach us how to pray and what to pray for. Forgive us for our transgressions, Lord. We, well, we can't claim that you owe us anything but your grace and your mercy. Bless those who wouldn't be here if they could. And bless those, Lord, who have tuned in, who are, are streaming, Lord, that they might realize that uh, you love them too, that, that, that uh, they have a, a, a praise to give and a God to glorify. And Father, we're not here just to receive, Lord. Help us to give praise. Bless your people, we pray. Every need, every heart, every soul. In Jesus' name we pray and for our sake. Amen.
Amen, amen. With a heart full of thanksgiving. Here's what I found from Wikipedia. Amen, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> amen, amen, amen. These, these iPods have their own agenda sometimes. <laughs> amen. Genesis chapter 1, uh, we've been studying the beginning, in order to get the picture, I want to read 1 through 6, 9 and 10, 14 and 15. 24 through 27. I'm not sure if they got all that on there, but uh, if you'll stand with me and honor God's word. And most of us have looked at this, but sometimes we look and we don't see, or we don't understand, or we look and don't think about it. One through six, let's read it together. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. The evening and the morning were the first day. Then God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. Now we'll drop down to 9 and 10. Then God said, let the waters under the heavens be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. And God called the dry land earth. He called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heavens to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and seasons, and for days and years. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heavens to give light on earth. And it was so. Then God said, let the earth bring forth the living creatures according to its kind, cattle and creeping thing and beasts of the earth, each according to its kind, cattle and cattle according to its kind and everything that creeps on the earth according to its kind and God saw that it was good then God said let us make man in our image according to our likeness let them have dominion over the fish of the sea over the birds of the air and over the cattle over all earth over every creeping thing that creeps in. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him, male and female. May God bless the reading and hearing of his word. That wasn't too much, was it? Now, if we, let, let, let's, let's try to process uh, that. And I, I, I've never used this phrase myself. But I've heard many people say, uh, in response to uh, anybody ever have something happen of, of, of consequence that they didn't really bank on or didn't really understand, it just happened. Uh, anybody ever use the phrase, everything happens for a reason? You've heard it anyway, huh? And that statement, it, it used to bother me. But although I've never used it, I think that I'm beginning to kind of understand 
what that means. In other words, it makes better sense to me now. I, I may be wrong, but I, I think that they are trying to explain or make some sense out of what has just happened. Even though they don't know why. I, I probably not use that very s same statement myself, but when God spoke to me about what he would say to us today, I began to kind of agree with that sentiment. It's difficult and almost impossible for any of us to really understand and make sense out of this life. A lot of it anyway. Anybody got some stuff that goes on that they, they, they really don't get? And it's getting more difficult all the time. But having said that, I have come to realize that the general focus of many of us is to know, to understand, and to make sense out of what we're in. And none of us do. I never thought of it before, but uh, at least one of the reasons that Adam and Eve ate the fruit from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and this is me thinking now, because they didn't tell me that. They wanted to know stuff. They say inquiring minds want to know. And our Wednesday noon Zoom Bible study, we, we have been looking at and, and talking about the, the book of Genesis, which is commonly known as the book of beginnings. And, and, and it, some of us go through all kind of study uh, uh, to try to find out who our heritage was and where we came from and where they came from and where they came from. And in case you didn't know it, the best place to go to get that handle is the Bible. And it talks about the beginning. And we, we, just read, uh, we just read the part that talks about how everything that has been created was created. And we studied creation and the development of man and how all, all of what we see and live with started. Uh, why it started, and some of the mysteries of creation. And most of us have been interested in that. Uh, our world is full of people who want to know, but struggle with making sense of it all. Uh, they're very bright people who, for some reason, think that they're, uh, uh, they've got it all figured out without consulting the Bible or accepting what God told them. Some of them have, have not given up on that and don't even attempt anymore, but uh, then there are also those of us who are, are still trying to find answers to life's questions. We're smart enough to know that we don't have it all figured out. And maybe you have not gotten there yet, but you will. And we look to God to guide us into a, uh, as much knowledge and understanding as he will permit us to have. The real deal is uh, we weren't meant to get it all. I didn't know that at first. I, I tried to get it all, but I, 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 I kept squeezing stuff in, but at some point it went out the other side. Now, I, one revelation that I've been forced to accept is that at least some of it is above my head. And I think I'm, sm I'm, I'm smarter than the next guy, but, but I, I now realize that in myself, I don't have the answer to all of life's questions. And some of the stuff people got to decide, I'm glad I ain't got to decide. I don't even have the capacity to know some of the questions. I, I can make up some stuff and act like I know it all, but the truth is that uh, many situations are above my head. 
And unless I get some wisdom from God, I won't ever know and understand that. Now, this is humiliating, but I concluded that some of what God has done is even beyond our capacity. You see, if I understood everything, then I would be equal with God. And that's not so. If I understood it all, I, I, I'd be at the same level with God, and that's not so. So having said all of that, I'm, I, I, I'm not discouraged because none of us are there. We only have limited knowledge and understanding. I'm going someplace, but uh, people of faith, as people of faith, we know and have faith in someone who does know and understand. Those of us who belong to God are in touch with the source of who has firsthand knowledge of all things. And I, I'm not throwing all, all that men know away. Uh, people know some stuff. And people can do some stuff. When I, when I, when I look at, uh, you know, we started off living in caves and gathering what grew. And now we have planes and these computers that are smarter than me. And all kind of marvelous things that man has done. Uh, people can do some stuff. And, and I, 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 I appreciate what man can do. I appreciate what man knows. I've learned a lot. But none of us have it all. I, I marvel at the complexity. I see planes flying, and you know, it, it takes a minute for me to realize how that happens. But none of us have the capacity to explain it all. There's a great deal of truth in that saying, everything happens for a reason. But none of us have the reason to everything that happens. The only complete and competent source I know of is God. And the most valuable resource that I know of is the Word of God. So let's look at that just for a minute. If, you know, it's so simple that many of us miss the point. Listen, in the beginning, God. Now, that sentence goes on further, but I think we ought to stop. In the beginning, God. And as far as I know, and in spite of the guess of men, everything begins and ends with God. I, I, you know, I, I got a curious questioning nature on everything, and, and my mind told me that there had to be something before the beginning. Anybody ever thought that too? In my mind, everything had to have a start. But when I looked at the Bible, uh, there is no record of anything before God. Everything preceded from him. God hasn't told us anything about anything before him. And, and all we really know is that God I said, all we really know is what God told us. Some people say science is another source, but I find science lacking in evidence or, or real proof. The only thing that explains it all is the Bible. Uh, the truth is that science, using all the information it has, uh, could tell us what is and sometimes what was but it has no way of really knowing how or why. You ever notice that? It, it must have been out of uh, desperation that, that scientists came up with this theory of evolution. And I never talk about that, but I, I, if you know anything about the scientific method, you ever heard of that? I, I, John, you heard of the scientific method. I'm explaining things, you know that the theory of evolution has no facts to prove cause or source. It can only take a look at what is and what was 
and speculate. That's why it's an unverified theory. I, 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 I'm, I'm sorry if I hurt you if I step on the, the scientist's nose, but uh, it's, a man, it's, it's man's attempt to come up with an explanation outside of the Bible of creation. God explained it all. Well, we, we read the, the, the core of it. But, but some men want to go around the Bible and explain creation another way. In short, the theory of evolution is an imaginative guess on what could or might have happened. A, a far out wild guess on how this highly complicated and detailed world with all the stars and with all of the planets and with all uh, moving in perfect harmony stand that way with all the vegetation and the mountains and the valleys and the rivers and with man and all the animals came to be. And the core of what science tries to sell us on is that all of this just happened. With no direction and with no reason. It just happened. And it's funny because when, when, when they teach this, they, they don't explain to the students that it is only a wild guess of how what they think possible. Now, I, I'm not going to go into any, any more details, but uh, there are huge gaps in it if you look at it. I, I'm just thankful that we have our Bibles with the real story. So if creation is of interest to anyone, the only place to start is Genesis 1-1. I'm not saying that it, it will answer all of your questions, but I, I am saying that the Word of God is the only place we can look to find a rhyme or reason for life and for earth, for universe or anything else. So look with me for a, for a moment. This is big and you don't, uh, you don't have to go deep to you see it. In the beginning, God. I know it's simple, but don't miss it. In the beginning, God. God created or made the heavens and the earth. Uh, science tells us now that with the uh, powerful telescopes and microscopes that they, uh, that they see other suns and other planets out there, other universes. And I believe in science, and I, I don't doubt what they see. My problem comes with their explanation of how it got there and why it's there. And we can think up all kinds of explanations, but based on what the Word says, everything that was created was created by God. And bear with me for just a moment as we look at this. Uh, uh, this is how it started. The earth was without form, we read it, and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep. Okay? And the Spirit of God, it says, and we overlook this, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Underline the Spirit of God. Most folk overlook that. Then, and this is big, then God said. Let there be light. And there was light. And the obvious question uh, men have is how God made all that stuff. And I want to highlight the, 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 the three, just, just three points. We're going to go on. Number one is, in the beginning, God. No place else to start but God. Number two, the Holy Ghost is the power of God to do stuff. The Holy Spirit was hovering over the face of the waters. And number three, and finally, God said. Everything happens as a response to what God said. Isn't that beautiful? And we need to pay attention uh, to all three of these very important points, and we have no choice but to start with God. First, we see God the Father, and even then we see God the Holy Spirit. They're hovering over everything. Then God spoke. Then God said. And, and when God said what he said happened. Well, Pastor, how did it happen? 
How did God do it? God spoke, and that hovering Holy Spirit brought it to fruition. The most powerful thing in the universe is what God says. And I need to say that again. Uh, the most powerful thing in the universe is what God says. What the Word of God says. Uh, because it's pure truth, because it's pure wisdom, because, listen to me, because what God says, the Spirit of God, huh? Sure, He does. Because of what God says, the Spirit of God makes happen. You know, I, I didn't really plan to go on that, but when I, when I look at the Bible, the Old Testament and the New Testament, the Gospels, and especially the book of Acts, and studying those areas, I, I, I couldn't help but notice the miracles and the healings and the supernatural things that happen when God speaks and when someone on assignment from God speaks. And we talked about all this at length in our study of the book of Acts. Uh, it, it was a while ago, but, but I remember posing a question to the class. And God wants me to pose it to, to you. And the question is, why did all of those things happen with God then? And do you remember? Why did all those things happen with that set of believers? As far as we know. And not much is happening with us now. What we have read today in Genesis is included in that. God spoke and creation happened in response. In the book of Acts, it, it, it was the apostles speaking uh, God's words and all kinds of miracles were seen. And the question is, why don't we see that kind of stuff now? Are we afraid to ask God for big stuff? Is God still powerful? When God speaks, do things still happen? Does what God say still mean something? And that may be part of the problem with, with, with the church today. Uh, is the problem God or is the problem us? I, 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 I don't buy the excuses that we use when we say that what, what God does or doesn't do anymore. When, when you're God, you can do what you want to do when you want to do it. So the people to the right say, well, uh, this was for that time and uh, it don't happen no more. We don't get to tell God that. We can write the miracles and the healing and the wonders of God off as things of, of the past, but it's not so. I believe that God is still God. Obviously, God was powerful then, but you know what? In my lifetime, I can witness to God's power. I, I've seen it. I, I, I've lived it. Uh, my being here today is a miracle in itself. So God is still powerful. I believe that what God says still counts for something. I believe that if, if we would do our part, we're talking about faith and uh, the Sunday school this morning. You know what? We believe what we decide we want to believe. I believe that what God says still counts. I believe that if we uh, would do our part, that it happened. I believe that if we were are truly faithful to God, God would be still faithful to us. And there's some, some more miraculous things could happen in our lives. Somebody listening needs to hear this today. Part of the problem is that most of the time we don't give God credit for what he does do. We find some other reason to justify it. I, I, I was driving on the East Ridge one time, and 
and and and uh, it was snowing outside, and I was I was going pretty good anyway. When you're young, you don't you don't respect stuff. And I saw a car coming. I was coming from St. Louis. This car was coming from East St. Louis, and this car was speeding. And back then, the East Bridge was divided, and you couldn't you couldn't get over. It was, you know, you go down. And I just closed my eyes and said, oh, God. And I still don't know why I didn't crash. I don't know where that car went. But I got a chance to go home that night. Just by the grace of God. I don't know what God did with that car. <laughs> I don't know. I, I didn't see him behind me, so God didn't just skip. You know, I didn't jump over him. He didn't jump over me. But God took it, and he, he, he made it okay when it wasn't okay. That's what a miracle is. When God takes something that's not okay, and he makes it okay. Is it that we don't have the Holy Spirit? Is it that we aren't real Christians? It's time out for us putting on entertainment that is not mentioned in the Bible. And that it really doesn't count with God. We know how to get people hyped. But hype doesn't last long. And hype doesn't solve anything. God is calling for, listen to me, lasting change. Not in how, how we jump or how loud we yell or even uh, how good we sing. Uh, the change God is calling for and rewarding uh, can only be found in our hearts. The change God wants us to, uh, to have is, is how sincerely uh, we love him. But he didn't stop there. And we love each other. So why is it that we don't have the same or, or greater power? Jesus said, he says, uh, uh, greater things shall you do than I do. You're going to do what I do, but you're going to do bigger stuff. Another one of the problems or issues is our measuring stick. Why are our kids not saved and serving the way other folks' kids seem to be? Why do we need to do uh, uh, to see results in ministry? What, what do we need to do to, to, to see it change in our, in our lives? Uh, uh, I don't know about you, but... Uh, I didn't got too old to be playing church. I'm looking for the real. And it's time for us to be real. What do you mean by real? It's time for us to be all in for God. Some people, yeah. You know, some, some people, when when they play something, they they're not serious. They just kind of, you know, ain't no big deal. All in is when it is a big deal. Used to say in basketball, when they leave it all on the court. And we, 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 we come to church sometimes, but do we leave it all on the court? We measure out some time for God. And we measure out uh, some dedication for God. And we measure out uh, 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 commitment for God. But how many of us are all in?
is your all on the altar of sacrifice made. Or as church is something you do on Sunday if you're not busy doing something else. What was happening in, in the book of Acts is they were all in. Them folk went and sold all their stuff and brought it and laid it at the disciples' feet. They weren't playing. God wants it all. You know what? I'm, I'm calling God out on his word today. And I know most of you won't like it, but God is calling us out on our commitment. If God is real, then I know he is. If we as children of God are, are real, uh, there has to be some sign to that effect. And I'm not talking about the, uh, shedding tears or shouting or dancing during the worship time. I'm, I'm talking about how loud. Uh, I'm not talking about how, how loud and how spiritual uh, we sound. Uh, I'm not talking about uh, dancing in the spirit or speaking in tongues. I'm, I'm looking at the measure that Jesus used. Uh, a lot of us, we, 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 we rank high in our denominational setting. But we don't rank so low in what Jesus used. He said, many will say in that day, did not I prophesy in your name? Did not I heal the sick? Did not I do this? Name? And Jesus is going to say, I know you're not. Depart from me. Turn in your Bible or your phone or whatever. Turn to John 13, 35. I'm trying to wrap this up. John 13, 35. And listen to what it says. It says, by this, everyone will know. The King James Version says, uh, by this shall all men know that you are my disciples indeed. If you have love for the brethren. That's the measure that Jesus uses. And, and, and too many church folk are what my grandmother used to call nice, nasty Christians. And I know it's not you, but you know. We, we say we love God, but we, we can't stand most folk. Yeah, I'm going to sit down in a minute. Well, 1 Corinthians 13 spells it out. He says, love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. Love is not puffed up. That's, that's prideful and self-endorsing. Love does not behave rudely. Love does not seek its own. Love is not easily provoked. I'm talking about you, you folk got a hairline temper. And we'll tell you, tell you about yourself in a second. Love does not seek its own. Love is not easily provoked. Look, some of us, we always assume the worst. Love thinks no evil. Love does not rejoice in the iniquity, but rejoices in truth. Bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. How many folk we got who can't take nothing? Who you think you're talking to? We measure things and people with all kinds of measuring sticks. But if, if you really want to know who is real, God-wise, 
And faith-wise, the measure Jesus said we should use is love. How loving are they? How humble are they? I challenge you today uh, to measure yourself by God's love standard. I think we ought to measure our, our church and every auxiliary by God's love standard. I hear the Holy, Holy Spirit saying to me that if we follow his love standard, if we do what God says do, the way God says do it, if we follow what the word of God says instead of what we say and what we think about what God says, there will be some results in our lives. We'll see signs and miracles. Our prayers will be answered. Our sick folk that, 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 that man has given up on will get well again. Lost folk who seem like they don't want to be saved will be drawn into the kingdom of God. There'll be results in our homes. By the authority of the word of God, I'm binding ALS to my brother. Take your hands off. I'm speaking healing to, 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 to Ernestine, the blood disease. I speak real salvation to those who come in or, or listen to this word. I bind the demon that, that, that is wreaking destruction in our lives or in the lives of our children and loved ones. In the mighty name of Jesus. Our spoken word from God will make a difference in our, our lives and the lives of those who, that, that we tell it to. Listen to me now. God had a purpose when he made you. The question is, are you doing your thing? Are you doing God's thing? Nobody is just here to be here. When God made us, he had a reason for making us. He made us fit what he made us for. And, and, and part of the problem many of us having is that we, uh, we got other ideas of what we want to do than what God made us to do. So you can have purpose, but you got to be in purpose. God, God don't have to bless what you want to do. But we got to get in line what God wants to do. Are you there? Are you in line with the will of God? I, I, I'm not saying you can't say your will, but, 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 but you, well, you got to do God's will. We got to surrender ourselves to God's purpose. Lord, not my will, but thy will be done. We have to buy in We got to place ourselves in the will of God. I know we have all our ideas and our wants and plans for our lives, but success only comes for us when we submit our will to God's will. See, see I can get what I want and not want it. Anybody ever did that? I really didn't want this. <laughs> but when I get what God wants for me, there's a peace and a comfort and a joy about it. I encourage you, I challenge you to submit your life to him and see what he does with it. Talked to Brother Cunningham yesterday, I guess it was, you know what? And, and I, I, can, I can say for sure, I'm, I'm so grateful and glad for what God is doing. He's not finished yet. This is not what I planned. But God had a better plan. 
Jeremiah says, I know the thoughts I have for you. Good thoughts. God is not going to give you. you see, the Bible says now, if, if, if man knows how to give good things to his children, how much more does God, now, I know we're afraid we won't make it, and we're, we're afraid that, that, that uh, we won't get all we do, all we want, but how much more will God give good things to those who love him? I, I, I planned some good stuff for me. But God went way beyond that. And that's the, that's the word today. How much more will God give you the desires of your heart? So not just have a purpose, but get into purpose. Submit to the purpose. Doesn't matter how old you are, doesn't matter how young you are. God can do great things in your life. Amen? Amen. Father God, we thank you. We give you praise and honor and glory. You started it all, Lord, and you're going to end it all. We trust our lives. We trust our, our will. We trust, Father, our days and our nights to you. And we know, Father, that you have our best interest at heart. Bless us, we pray. Guide us, we pray. Change us, we pray, into your will and your way. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Doors of the church open. Doors of the church open. If you're looking for a place to fellowship, I invite you to come. If you've been working your thing and it's not coming out the way you thought it was going to be, or if you got it and didn't like it, know that God has a plan. If you trust him, he'll bring it about. He'll bless you. Are you all in?
Yes, if there are none, get to his room. tighten your grip today I said you ought to tighten your grip today I'll never let go for I received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you that the Lord Jesus the same night in which he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he break it and said take eat this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Why are we doing it? In, in remembrance of him. After the same manner, also he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. not even about your situation. For as oft as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do shew the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. Uh, how, do you, how do you be unworthy? You've not trusted in Christ. Don't do this to impress your neighbor. But remember that you have faith in Christ. And honor what he's done. Uh, we're remembering his body that was broken, his blood that was shed. And maybe we haven't measured up. And none of us have. But Christ died because of that. And the Bible says that if we would judge ourselves, too many of us are too busy judging somebody else. But he said, if you would judge yourself, you would not be judged. You know who you are and how you are. You know who you trying not to speak to. You know who you're saying all kind of bad stuff about. So w w you ought to decide now, I'm going to start speaking. I'm going to stop 
running them down. And I'm going to try. All I can do is to lift them up. And I'm going to honor God's sacrifice by doing that. But not, not taking the bread and not taking the wine does not make it okay. Somebody said, well, I ain't going to take communion because I was out last night. Not celebrating the body and the blood doesn't make your being out last night okay. If you're convicted, don't do it next week. <laughs> but honor God every chance you get. Father God, we pray in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for your body. We thank you, Father, for your sacrifice for the blood that cleansed our souls, we thank you. And we celebrate it today in joy and thanksgiving. Let us eat and drink. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May his countenance shine upon you and give you his peace. Amen. I, I, I need uh, some able-bodied men with good backs to help move some stuff. Uh, I need some able-bodied men with good backs to get ready for our Easter program. Uh, keep